Okay, let's hear from both sides of the aisle now going head to head. Sinclair political commentator Amisha Cross and former governor of Maryland Bob Ehrlich. Let's start with this one, you guys. Impeachment, why now? Again, this is being taped prior to the actual impeachment vote. So let me start with you, Amisha. Make your case for impeachment, please. We've seen this president. We know his rhetoric. His rhetoric has led to mob violence this time. This is the last straw. This is a president whose tweets. This is a president whose speeches. This is a president whose um, stump in various states has led individuals to uh, want to pursue this type of violence. He named the place. He named the date, the time. He created an environment for this insurrection to take place, and he encouraged his MAGA supporters to do it. At this point, we have to prove that President Trump is not above the law, that this is a president president who has reached the wit's end of our Constitution. This is a president who needs to be held accountable. This is a president who could not go about inciting violence and creating these types of actions when they destroy the fabric of America and our democracy, putting lives at risk. This president has gone too far. And impeachment, this is, this is our last lever to pull. Uh, Bob, you know, there, there are those on the left who are in, even in Congress who are pointing to the line where President Trump said you have to fight for what, what's yours. Um, I think there are millions of, of cases where that line has been used in American politics on the streets in, in, in protests and movements. Yet, for some reason, the president, do you think the president is being held um, at a different, to a different standard than the rest of, of American and co the Constitution's meaning? Well, the president's been held to, I don't know what's, if there's a standard you could cite, because this is simply the latest chapter in the long running saga that began even prior to his swearing in when um, certain folks out there, certain members were talking about impeachment. The impeachment dialogue continued through years one, two, three, and four. You saw the Russia hoax, you saw the Ukraine hoax, and this is simply the latest chapter of it. I, I would also say that, um, by the way, there's constitutional scholars who have opined, but, but, but we're, what's interesting here is besides this long running history is, and the, besides the fact that these constitutional scholars say, no, this is the party that we keep hearing wants to heal. This is the president we keep hearing wants to bring us all together. Uh, this polarized country, this great divide. And I couldn't think of a worse way to, to achieve that aim. I would also point out, by the way, that uh, Senator Manchin in West Virginia had an interesting quote, I thought a pretty good quote, very good quote the, the other day. And I was gonna quote him. Uh, be so ill-advised for Joe Biden, this is the context of impeachment here, trying to heal the country, trying to be the president of all the people uh, when we're going to be so divided and fighting again. It appears that some folks on the left just always are going to fight the president, including, by the way, when he's out of office, because that's really my last point. With regard to process, if you pass impeachment today or tomorrow, uh, it goes to the Senate for the trial, and there's no time for a right, trial, right. so we well, well, all know well, Bob, just a, a, a lot, a, 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 I don't mean to be rude, I don't mean to cut you off, but let's stay on that topic for a second. And Misha, you know, if you want to hold President Trump accountable for what hit some of his supporters did, I get it, I understand that. But for Joe Biden to say, I'm not involved in the impeachment, is he not? Is he not condoning impeachment? If he really wanted to make this stop, he could step and say, Enough, guys, I'm trying to unite the country. He can't play the uniter, the great uniter, while his party is trying to impeach and disenfranchise a whole half the country, 74 million voters. Can he? You know what I find extremely interesting here, Eric, is that Republicans are now talking about unity. Where has the unity been when Donald Trump was absolutely fine pushing down the throats of Americans' policies that only created further divisions? Where was the unity when President Trump and his MAGA supporters were out here trying to throw out the millions of votes of African Americans across this country and challenging them in states where the African American vote pulled it over the edge for, for Joe Biden? Where was the unity when he said, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, when he was out here supporting those who, the supporting police officers in terms of police brutality against African-Americans in this country? Where was the unity then? Right now, we're talking about okay, accountability. Okay, I, I, I agree, on Misha, unity, but the Misha I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't think Donald Trump was a uniter. He was, he was, he was polarizing. There's no question in my mind. My question to you was, Joe Biden says, but let's bring back unity, let's heal the country, let's bring back the unity to unify the country, yet his party is dividing the country uh, 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 as we speak on the House floor. 
Democrats are doing their constitutional duty. They're holding a president accountable for acts of insurrection. They're holding a president accountable for what he has done to, to foster this group of individuals who attacked our capital last week. They are doing what is necessary to ensure that our country gets back on track. Because you cannot let a president, and mind you, this isn't President Trump's only time of inciting violence. He literally did it just a few months ago with his rhetoric online and his rhetoric on stump speeches when we saw the attacks that were foiled, the plots against the governor of Michigan. This is something that should have been stopped a long time ago. If you don't hold the president accountable, he will continue to incite this mob type of action. He will continue to radicalize his base. And this is high time that this president is held accountable for his actions because they literally can take people's lives. Well, what about that, Bob? Should the president be held accountable for the actions of, of the people who follow him so vehemently, so aggressively? Listen, if, if you're going to adopt that standard, that's going to be very difficult to for any political leader to say to say anything at any time. What you just heard, though, is just this familiar indictment that we've heard for the last four years. Uh, a lot of Democrats never go over the fact that he won. A lot of Democrats, in fact, continue to challenge the fact that he won. We've heard that. We've seen that in members of Congress. Uh, they clearly, uh, uh, candidate Trump had a very clear agenda a very different agenda from uh, President Obama. Uh, Hillary was supposed to be Obama three. It didn't happen. There was great disappointment. There was resentment. And it certainly turned into hatred. And all you saw for the last four years, including, by the way, through the last impeachment and through the Russia hoax and every other hoax that we've seen, is this, uh, this very uh, serious sense of this guy's an illegitimate president. Uh, and obviously now, right. now you hear you see it at the end. So it just doesn't, it's a continuation, in my view, of the vitriol that we've right. seen from the left. Um, uh, he's leaving right. in a week. Again, your point is very well taken. If, if President elect Biden really is serious about bringing the country together and, and stopping the polarization in right. some sense, he'll step forward. Yeah, we need to do that if we're going to unite the country. Anyway, Amisha Cross, thank you very much. Bob Ehrlich, appreciate your time. Pleasure.